I played the 7 best roguelites according to YouTubers and I ranked them all. So how will my rankings stack up to theirs? Now I have heard good things about Risk of Rain 2 but I have never played it. So I assume this is my objective. Aside from murdering everything in sight, getting all the money, and collecting as much loot as possible. The open map is an interesting change since I'm used to playing 2D side scrollers where their destination is usually just to the right. Or sometimes, sometimes, to the left. The combat is pretty decent with 4 actions, a jump, and an item. 4 doesn't seem like a lot, but I think it is one more than the usual. There is something about the gameplay that didn't sit right with me, and after analyzing the workings of my own brain, I realized that it was simply the movement of the character. It felt very floaty. I know it goes with the whole space theme at all, but I just didn't like it. Other than that, it wasn't bad. I found it really cool that picking up duplicates of the same item would actually enhance the effect, allowing you to keep stacking your favorite buff. The the progression system isn't anything special, I would just consider it the norm. Unlocking more loot which may appear in subsequent runs as well as more playable characters and skills by completing certain tasks during your gameplay. I honestly enjoy more progression in my roguelikes, or roguelites technically. I think the most interesting feature of the game is the timer because the mobs get harder and harder the longer you take on each run. I like the sense of urgency this creates, but that might not sit well for those with crippling anxiety. So my impressions after 5 hours of play are a little mediocre, so I was ready to move on. And the next game on the list is Dead Cells. I watched 8 different videos from 8 different YouTubers ranking their favorite roguelites, so I took the top 10 to 15 games on their list and added them together to see which games appeared the most. The bottom 4 games had 4 votes, next 2 had 5, and the top game had 6 votes. Dead Cells is a 2D pixel art side scroller that doesn't take itself too seriously. I'm not gonna lie and say this is the first time I've played Dead Cells since I've raked in just a bit over 20 hours previous to this. It's enough to get my toes wet, but definitely not enough to consider myself a pro since I keep getting wrecked by the last boss on just one boss cell. The game is very reminiscent of the old school platformers but just way more freaking violent. I think nearly everything you kill has to explode. It is somewhat uncommon to have a story in a roguelike, but there is one here, except I just never figured it out because it is pretty freaking confusing. I would consider this a very fast paced game and the super snappy controls and responsiveness of the character allows it to be one. There's a good variety of actions that matches well with a huge array of weapons and items. What you find and what you keep is ultimately going to decide how you're going to be playing that run and the randomized subsets on each piece keeps it in the hands of the RNG gods, but still gives you a bit of control with the mutations, scrolls, and ability to reroll substats. I really like that because it's a mix of RNG that can still be influenced and overcome by your knowledge of the game. The progression system isn't anything crazy, but it is nice that you get some control over it. You can unlock weapons, items, mutations, costumes, and passive buffs by spending cells you collect during your run, because once you die, you lose all of your unspent cells. I think the difficulty and high skill ceiling of the game is what makes it good and the addictive nature of it is attributed to the lack of BS mechanics. Now since I've played Dead Cells, I've always seen it as one of the best, but after playing the rest of these games on the list, will it still be? Because the next game I played was Gunfire Reborn. I've wanted to play this game for a very long time, but immediately I was blown away by this game because there was a tutorial. Not that I needed one, but it was kind of nice to have one. Imagine Borderlands, not Borderlands 3, but Borderlands 2 as a roguelike with furries. The game plays like a typical FPS with a slight mix of Overwatch because every character has their own set of skills, not because you can teabag people. The game starts a little slow because you are stuck with only one playable character unless you buy the DLCs. This works well because it gives you a bit of time to understand the systems before introducing you to another playable character. The progression system lets you gain permanent stat buffs and passives. The stat buffs are purchased using Soul Essence which is collected during your runs. New weapons and scrolls are unlocked by meeting certain requirements during a run. I really like this kind of progression system because it gives you more to strive towards. Relying strictly on skill to progress is fine, but I find it more fun when I'm able to progress my character the more I play it. The gameplay is fast paced with a huge variety of weapons constantly dropping from defeated enemies. You can acquire scrolls which give you passive buffs or curses that negatively affect you. You can also upgrade your skill trees during a run that can open up different playstyles and influence your weapon of choice. The combination of all this adds a lot of variety to each run, which I really like. Even though it's an FPS game, the 
gameplay loop is the same as your typical roguelike. You go through a stage, you fight a boss, and you move on to the next. I do wish there were more variety to the stages or biomes or whatever you want to call it, instead of it always progressing from temple to desert to Asian to snow. At least there are multiple bosses with hopefully more to come in the future. Though that is a flaw, this greatest strength definitely makes up for it because Gunfire Reborn is a multiplayer game with matchmaking. So imagine if you had friends, you could play with them. And since I don't have friends, I hit up matchmaking and it was surprisingly fun. I wouldn't recommend doing this at first without a decent understanding of the game because your teammates will plow through the stages at a pace as much too fast for you. But once you get settled and have a grasp of how everything works, it is very fun to play with other people. Queue times are about 3 to 7 minutes, but it is well worth it. So once I was able to rip myself away from Gunfire Reborn, which I quickly racked up over 50 hours in, I played the one game that I never had any desire to play, The Binding of Isaac. It is very hard to talk about roguelikes without somebody mentioning The Binding of Isaac since it was one of the bigger games that brought the genre into the spotlight, like Final Fantasy VII with RPGs and Lion King with games you will never beat. This game is kinda as basic as it comes, the manual is written on the freaking floor. I found it limiting since you can't shoot diagonally, like even Smash TV allowed you to do that. The loop is basic, you shoot things, then you find power-ups that allow you to shoot things, but differently. Then you have bombs and you get an item. You never really know what anything does, but you just gotta figure it out. That is the fun of it, but sometimes it is a bit annoying considering how many freaking items there are. The game is a bit challenging because it is so simple. You rely a lot on your power-ups to make your life easier, and if you get then too freaking bad. I honestly don't know what to say about this game. You go room to room like a Zelda dungeon and murder everything to go to another room to do the same thing. Then you stumble upon a boss and you shoot it to death. The progression is super basic with just unlockable items and characters. I don't think the game is bad, but maybe playing this 10 year old game for the first time in 2023 really shows its age when compared to everything else on the market today. But that might not be the case because this next entry is from 2016, Enter the Gungeon. This is another game I've previously played for a cool 15 hours. Enter the Gungeon is considered a twin stick shooter or bullet hell game or whatever the crap you want to call it, which I gotta admit I've never been any good at. You do two things in this game. You shoot and you roll. That's it. You go to a room, you shoot everything in sight, then you move on to the next room. What makes this game more exciting than Isaac, even though I described that game the same way I'm currently describing this one, is the fact that you get to shoot in more than four directions. The dodge does add a lot to the game, as well as flipping tables and doing sick freaking slides. But controls aside, you get to pick up a bunch of different guns to play with. Some of them are really fun to use, but a lot of them are really not. It kind of helps balance out the game in a way, so you don't just keep picking up good and overpowered weapons, but it does get really frustrating when everything you pick up is complete garbage. You can pick up items as well, some being passive and some active. There's a huge variety of everything in this game that is unlocked through a decent progression system. You collect currency from beating bosses and you unlock new items to find during your runs from NPCs that you rescue. There is so much stuff in this game that I can do 10 runs and never pick up the same item twice, but I think that is the beauty of it. Unless you found a gun you like, then maybe you'll see it again in another week. This game is also incredibly hard, or at least it was to me. I'll admit, I've still never beat this game, so maybe I'm just trash. Maybe I'm a boomer and my reaction time has gotten way too slow and that's why old people play cards. And that might explain this next entry on the list, Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire is a deck building roguelike that made huge contributions to putting this subgenre on the map. The simple and crude art style of it works well, it shows how simple and complex the game is at the same time. Each character has a completely different deck and playstyle. Learning the strengths and weaknesses of each character is vital to a successful run. Throughout the run you can pick up new cards to add to your deck, power up certain cards, find relics which grant you passive buffs, and potions to use during battle. Essentially, adding more RNG to a game that revolves around RNG. The progression system is just playing the game. You get points every time you play, and so the more you play, the more you unlock. It is pretty freaking simple, and I believe that is the reason why it is such a beloved title. Compared to the rest, it is a super chill game. It is very relaxing to play and allows you to think and plan your next move instead of always frantically mashing buttons to try and survive. The amount of complexity in all the battle mechanics as well as the card combos makes it quite addicting. But even though I'm already singing my praises for Slay the Spire, the YouTube community did not place it at number one, but instead, of no surprise, Hades. 
came in at number one. Hades is an isometric hack and slash roguelike. At least that is how I would describe it. I'm sure no one was shocked when Hades came in at number one because it has so much to offer. The gameplay is incredibly smooth and the aesthetics are second to none. The controls are simple yet boast enough variety while at the same time not overwhelming you. The random boons obtained during your run will dramatically change your playstyle and quite possibly your sexuality. I like this because the RNG still grants the player some control over the run and I do appreciate being able to control certain aspects aspects of the game which is why the progression system in Hades is one of my favorites. The system lets you slowly unlock more and more while you learn the ins and outs of the game, much like Gunfire Reborn. Progression is unlocked by spending a variety of currencies that you find during your runs, and there are a lot of them. Some allow you to upgrade stats, some let you spruce up the lobby, some grant you artifacts, and some unlock the additional weapons. But most importantly, some allow you to seduce the Gorgon Maid. So Hades not only went a step further with the progression, but they also balanced it with a pact of punishment, letting you choose exactly how you want to, well, be punished. Maybe by giving the enemies more health, setting a timer, adding more mobs, buffing the bosses, or while being stepped on. Now you may think that at this point I am done nutting all over this game, but I have yet to scream the safe word. Because Hades has a story. This adds to the addictiveness of Hades because every single run, win or lose, it keeps progressing the story. And the delivery of it is nothing short of perfection because every single line of dialogue is voice acted. And as a bonus, the voice acting is actually really good. So again, it is no surprise that this was the favorite, but was it mine? Coming in at number 7 I don't think is a surprise to anyone who made it this far in the video and that is The Binding of Isaac. This game isn't bad but it really shows its age when compared to this list of top tier roguelikes. I think this is one of those games that people love because they played it back in the day so it kinda just holds a special place in their hearts. Like Pokemon games. You don't love it for its complex battle mechanics, you love it because it makes you feel happy and takes you back to your childhood where Lunchables were an acceptable form of food. How is this even pizza? But that's just my opinion, I might catch some flack for that or even for this, but number 6 will have to be Risk of Rain 2. I didn't understand the appeal of it, I thought the game was a little bit bland which honestly matches the graphics and the atmosphere quite well. I played for a bit and I just got bored. Why does the multiplayer not include a matchmaking system? I think the lobby system is completely outdated, I just want to hit a button, surf TikTok for 5 minutes, then load into a game. So placing the two games I played the least at the bottom two spots may seem unfair, but it's really not. I played these the least because I enjoyed playing them the least. Now coming in at number 5 will have to be Enter the Gungeon. Now unlike Risk of Rain 2 and Isaac, I do like Enter the Gungeon. I think the game is quite basic but the variety of guns and the wackiness built into it makes it amusing. It's a fun game but because of the high difficulty, I find it a lot harder to want to push multiple runs during a single session. Much like and unlike Dead Cells which is coming in at number 4. It is not a secret that Dead Cells is a very hard game. But for for some reason it wasn't as demoralizing when I lost a run. I found the fast nature of Dead Cells to be very fun and addicting. A lot of the weapons and items were amusing to play with, not just random trash thrown in there for the lulls. Now I'm not ranking these games lower due to the difficulty of it or because I suck at them. Being bad at something doesn't mean you're going to dislike it. If that were true, most men would really dislike sex. Now before we hit the top 3, if you've been enjoying this video so far, I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. If you don't like it and still made it this far, then feel free to dislike the video and google the word masochist. That is M-A-S-O-C-H-I-S-T. Masochist. Number 3 may surprise you since I pretty much nutted everywhere while talking about it, but it is going to have to be Hades. I have put more hours into Hades than I have in all the others because it is an amazing freaking game. I have nothing negative to say about it and I am super psyched for Hades 2 because of it. But even though I can't find any flaws in Hades, I still can't give it the top spot because the number 1 spot goes to Gunfire Reborn. This may surprise you, but I do have my reasons. So we are going to talk about Slay the Spire first because it took the number 2 spot. I think the best or maybe worst part of this game is that it is super addicting. Combine that with the relaxing nature of the game, it is such a blast to play. You don't need to be in the mood to play Slay the Spire. You just load it up and you are put into the mood to play it. It is so easy to burn away hours and hours playing this and you are always wanting to do another run because you crave that dopamine rush from pulling off big brain plays. So what is it that makes Gunfire Reborn my number one game? I just straight up had the most fun playing it. 
Gunfire Reborn embodies what makes an FPS fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously, very unlike a lot of modern FPS games. The graphics and aesthetics are fun, and the chibi furry characters are adorable. The progression system is great alongside a variety of characters and multiple game modes. Then to top it all off, the multiplayer makes the game even better. This wasn't a list of what each game did best with some super complex scoring system. This was simply what game I enjoyed playing the most. So feel free to let me know in the comments what roguelike you think deserved the top spot. Or tell me to get good, whatever. And check out these other videos on screen, they're probably freaking bangers dude. I guarantee it.